So we surveyed the world's literature on burnout to specifically answer the question whether working in the hospital leads to more burnout than working in an outpatient setting. And we looked specifically at about 1,800 articles about burnout to winnow it down to 58 that had some sort of specific burnout measure and told us whether the physician surveyed worked on an inpatient setting and an outpatient setting or neither or both. Of those, we were able to statistically analyze about 28. And when we got that down to that level, we weren't able to find any differences in the clinic doctors or the hospital doctors with regard to burnout which in some regards is good news for the hospitalist movement in the United States. If that holds for American hospitalists, that's good. But the flip side of that is that there's burnout everywhere. There really isn't a group you can look at, emergency room, anesthesia, hospital, clinic, where you won't find a significant degree of burnout. A group in Rochester led by my colleague and mentor Colin West actually just looked at that recently and had a, a, a big article that showed that the two groups that seemed most prone to burnout, at least in the United States, were emergency room doctors and general internists. Neurologists rated high as well. A lot of the physicians involved in our group, both inpatient and outpatient, were general internists. So that certainly is of interest to hospitalists and to, to internal medicine doctors in general. Some factors that we know correlate with burnout are workload, level of control over what you do at work, age in a, in a opposite way so that the older physicians seem to be relatively resilient but less prone to burnout. Um, specialty certainly plays a part as well. Taking care of yourself, uh, trying to find things outside of your work. That was William Osler's solution was to have a, a hobby that you're passionate about which is good advice for anybody. In terms of scientific answers to that question, the things that they, the interventions that have been tried tend to be pretty intensive. Um, certainly there's, there's a budding growing body of research about resiliency training for resident doctors, for medical students, and for staff doctors that we're hoping are going to lead to better evidence-based answers to that question. But for now, we have really just a list of, of good advice to follow about exercising, eating right, trying to find things about your job that, that you take pleasure in, um, and varying what you do during the day so that you don't fall into a rut that doctors all too often can fall into. It's also important to remember that burnout is different from depression. Depression is a, a medical condition that affects all parts of, of your life, whereas burnout is a work-specific issue that has to do with, with caring for people over a long period of time. And a, a vacation or time away can help that temporarily, but people tend to find when they come back to the environment that burned them out that it, it returns pretty quickly. But it's different from depression. It's different from job satisfaction. There are some very burned out doctors out there, at least filling out the surveys that we reviewed, that are very happy that they chose to become doctors and are happy with their jobs, but have from time to time or sometimes more frequently lost the, the human component of what they do and, and badly want to get that back. The good news for doctor is that there's more attention being paid to this. It's being seen as a problem and the, the answers are out there. We just need to find them.